So we've really seen a lot of changes. Most of what you've read about in hepatology that has changed is the way we treat hepatitis C. Uh, hepatitis C is a common virus. It affects, we estimate, five to seven million people across the country, most of whom remain uh, not diagnosed. And we pick them up now based on age cohort screening or looking at certain risk factors. But what's really changed is the way we treat it. If we were to have this conversation three years ago, uh, we had therapies that were based upon interferon, which is a once a week injection for 24 to 48 weeks. We cured, at best, 50 to 60% of folks who came in, and we made them miserable over that period of time with s significant side effects, such that most people said, oh, I don't want to be treated because the treatment's far worse than the disease. Fast forward to today, so now we are in mid-2016, and what we have now, after several years of drug approvals, are multiple regimens for treatment of hepatitis C that are just pills. Some of them range from one pill a day, some of them are four pills a day. Uh, most of the durations are either 8, 12, or 24 weeks. The side effect profiles are minimal, meaning 10% of people generally can get a headache easily treated with aspirin or Tylenol, and 10% of people may feel tired on treatment. Uh, but the cure rates, and the key here are the cure rates, is they're 90 to 95% for all comers, and in specific groups, they approach 99 to 100%. So we've really changed in hepatitis C what we are able to do for patients, and that means we can now treat patients. So I am. Um, I would not recommend that at all. Uh, there have been no shorter regimens that have been shown to be successful with the current treatments for less than eight weeks. And even in the eight-week population, that's one specific group and one specific group only. So those are the patients who have hepatitis C genotype 1, who do not have cirrhosis and who have never been treated before, whose viral load initially are less than 6 million. So I would be very suspect of any of these other kind of studies that come out. Uh, there are studies being done for even newer medications uh, that may decrease that uh, time needed to 6 weeks, but so far every 6-week regimen has failed. Um, every 8-week regimen other than those that I just mentioned has failed. So 12 weeks isn't so bad. Uh, it's easy for people to take. Uh, they do extraordinarily well, you know, and again, I would stick to what's truly been studied and approved. Liver disease is unique amongst many of the things in medicine, is that we truly are an international community. Most of the large studies are done across the world with US, Europe, Asia, even some parts of Africa or Australia involved. Um, but I would look at studies that come across the internet or just people mention it with, with care uh, and really look into if they really have merit and ha what are the methods uh, before you start changing. Because the current therapies we have are so good. In 2015, we put on drug more than 1,000 patients for hepatitis C. Uh, our cure rates are 98% across the board, regardless of degree of fibrosis and genotype. It's been really rewarding. It's changed our practice completely from sort of a morose place that everyone was sad and no one wanted therapy to a place of happiness because we're curing almost everyone. We put in a pharmacy program, uh, which we're very proud of at Northwell. What does that pharmacy program do? First, it helps get patients medication. You know, across the country, the biggest problem has been that although these therapies are so wonderful, uh, insurance has been not so helpful in getting patients medication. So you have this unique situation where you have a cure with simple pills and people who can't get it. Many of the pharmaceutical companies do have um, these plans. They've been extraordinarily helpful, but they have an income level. Uh, yeah. Most of the problem has been insurers who have artificially placed rules into who can be treated. So for example, for a long time, they only allowed to treat people who had advanced fibrosis or cirrhosis, where the bulk of people do not. Now, if you think of that and use an analogy of kidney disease, would you wait until someone's kidneys failed before you would treat them? It makes no sense. And so the real reason it was cost, right? It was all done for cost. We're able to get drug for 
95 to 98 percent of people regardless of insurance and regardless of fibrosis. Uh, where, the, where across the country is about 50 to 60 percent.